If one believes in God, what is the best way to know God? Should understanding the natural world play a role in religion? How do these questions relate to the development of science and psychology? St. Thomas Aquinas, now on the philosophical roots of psychology. The last Roman emperor gave up his throne to the Visigoths in 476 AD. For many, this marks the beginning of the Dark Ages of Europe. During this period, the Greek and Roman writings were destroyed or lost. Roman law collapsed. The church owned vast amounts of property and controlled many people's lives. People were either viewed as believers or heretics. Little progress was made in science and philosophy. Europe was dominated by unchallengeable church dogma and anti-intellectualism. The eight Christian crusades between 1095 and 1291 brought Europe into contact with the Islamic world and the writings of Aristotle. With the fall of Rome, many of the ancient Greek writings were saved by the Muslims in the Middle East. Just as Augustine had integrated some compatible Platonic ideas into Christian theology about 900 years earlier, a new wave of theologians began to integrate Aristotelian ideas into the Christian faith. This occurred between the 11th and 13th centuries. This new wave of thinkers were called the Scholastics, and St. Thomas Aquinas was one of the most influential. Aquinas was a large man and was often called the Dumb Ox. He was born in an aristocratic family. He joined the Dominican order and walked away from his family's power and wealth. His mother was angered by this choice and ordered her son kidnapped and imprisoned in the family castle. His vows of chastity were tested by Aquinas' brothers, who tempted him with a prostitute. After about a year, his family set him free, and Aquinas was able to pursue his religious calling. There is no question that Aquinas made major theological contributions to Christian thought. There were a number of Aristotle's ideas that were easily integrated by Aquinas into Christian theology. One was the importance of active reason, Active reason involves the identification of abstract principles through the use of logical reasoning. Another idea was the hierarchy of nature. According to Aristotle, nature ranged from the neutral matter to the cause of everything. Even souls had a hierarchy. Human souls were the highest, then came animals, and finally vegetative souls. Their earth was viewed as the center of the universe, Finally, there was Aristotle's notion of the unmoved mover, which was the cause of everything. Aquinas identified the unmoved mover as the Christian God. The integration of these ideas allowed for the reconciliation of faith and reason. 900 years earlier, according to Augustine, faith and not reason was the path to knowing God. The natural world was irrelevant for the devout Christian. The leap forward that Aquinas proposed was that faith and reason were compatible means of knowing God. Aquinas said that reason could be used to provide logical proofs for the existence of God. Aquinas also argued that since God created nature, God could be known through his creations. This made the observation of nature another legitimate path to God. Why was Aquinas' synthesis of Aristotelian ideas and Christian theology important to the development of modern science and psychology? Since reason was established as a separate path to God, reasoning attained a unique validity as a way of knowing. Thus, faith and reason could be studied separately. Aquinas also proposed that the study of nature was a legitimate path to God. Nature was now no longer reviled as Augustine claimed. Nature was now elevated in importance. In the end, Aquinas revives Aristotle's ideas of the importance of reason and the observation of the natural world. Although Aquinas' mission was to know God, reason and observation are the central components of science and psychological methodology. Philosophy and understanding the natural world had now reattained a more important status. Aristotle had proposed that reason and observation were important for knowledge 1600 years earlier. 
This reemergence of reason and observation laid the groundwork for the rise of the Renaissance humanism, beginning in the 15th century. It was during the Renaissance that science took big leaps forward.